Greetings, Ted Hicks, founder, CEO, and chief investment officer for Hicks & Associates Wealth Management. Today is Friday, September 30th, 2022, and uh, we are getting some rain here in Cary, North Carolina, as well as Southern Pines. We've already lost power in our Southern Pines building as Hurricane Ian begins to have an impact here in the uh, central por portion of North Carolina. So forgive the slightly more casual approach to uh, my attire today. I wore a uh, rain jacket instead of a sports jacket. Uh, that said, um, let's dive in and start looking at the S&P 500. So on the screen right now is the S&P 500. And uh, before I get too deep into this, I wanna bring two things up. Well, number one, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and also we're curious, if you would leave us a comment below and tell us, do you prefer the more in-depth monthly market monologues uh, that are usually longer in duration, or do you prefer the shorter, uh, more frequent updates? So curious to get your thoughts in that regard. That said, Again, this is the S&P 500, and what I want to highlight is that we I had previously drawn in a, a horizontal line going back to June 15 and 16 to represent these lows. Um, one could argue that I should draw the line um, at the bottom of the wicks because that's the technical intraday low. I tend to use the open and close as the uh, is where I draw the support line. But then if we zoom in over here, you can see that what's happened um, this is Friday. This is last Friday, the 23rd, where we had a really bad day. But the good news is the market rallied above this um, support zone. Well, then Monday, um, we actually closed below that zone. Tuesday, very volatile day up and down, but again, closed right kind of in that range. And yesterday, um, I'm sorry, this was Wednesday. Wednesday was a very positive day. And then of course, Thursday wiped those uh, gains right, uh, right out. So this is SPY, it is the S&P 500 ETF. And uh, we're gonna zero in a little bit so we can easily see this. Let's move it up. Um, this is the, the zone that we were just talking about on the official index of the S&P 500. And again, we can see that we are trading below that um, zone. And uh, that's, that's the risk. Now again, the market opened below this level. Uh, still within yesterday's range. So yesterday the, the market got all the way down here uh, to 360 uh, on the SPY. So we're still trading in that range, in yesterday's range. The risk is if we go lower and make a new low. Yesterday again was a new intraday low. The, the concern is, is if we, if we continue to push lower from a technical perspective, we're not finding another support area until we get all the way back to, I think that's September and October of 2020. As I mentioned, we're recording this the day that Hurricane Ian is beginning to impact North Carolina. In uh, the central part of the state here in Cary, we're getting high winds um, and rain off and on as the storm is approaching. And uh, a hurricane seems to be an appropriate analogy to what we've experienced in the stock and bond markets. I would argue it's been gale force winds all year long. So let's take a look and update a, a couple of stats to try to keep things in perspective. And then I'm gonna give um, a little bit of good news, bad news on the economy. So on the screen right now is the S&P 500. Every line represents a different calendar year. Uh, since I've been alive. And the bold red line is the current year. And as you can see, there's only one line below that line. So that the only ye year that was worse at this point in the calendar was 2002. So as I mentioned, it's been uh, gale force winds uh, in the stock market uh, pretty much all year long. Um, but let's take a look at the bond market. And we'll see the same thing there. So on the screen right now are some popular fixed income ETFs. And uh, this is data year to date. So what I'm trying to show here is that all of these bond ETFs are negative. This one is emerging market debt. That's negative 35%. Um, this is 20-year bonds, negative 28%. And so that's part of what I'm trying to do today is to try to help keep things in perspective. The stock market is having one of the worst years uh, on record since I've been alive. The bond market is having one of the worst years 
Um, and usually when there is a tough market, uh, stock market, we can frequently look to the bond market as a reprieve. That's not been true. As I mentioned a minute ago, 2002, at this point in the year, 2002 is the only year that was more negative than the current year against the data since I've been alive. Well, let's look at the fixed income in 2002. Now, in 2002, a lot of those bond ETFs that I just mentioned, they weren't invented just yet. So I can only find two that have data in the year 2002. But look at the data. TLT was positive 7%. So in 2002, when we had a very negative stock market year, at least we had bonds where we could go to. Or SHY was at least uh, positive uh, 1% or 1 and a quarter percent. So this has been a very, very difficult year. So while we have been facing these gale force winds in the stock and the bond markets all year long, for the most part, we are very pleased with how we have managed risk in this uh, very, very difficult environment. Obviously, if you have any questions on your specific accounts, feel free to reach out to me or uh, your lead advisor and we can happily uh, chat. That said, let's begin to wrap um, by showing just a couple of economic charts. So first, the bad news from an economic standpoint on the screen right now is the total federal debt. Um, the good news is it is beginning to come down. I would argue it is not coming down fast enough. And this is absolutely one of the leading causes for inflation is when governments print money. Uh, but I won't belabor that uh, for right now. I do want to leave you with some good news, and that is on this chart. This is the household obligations chart. Household obligations is basically the debt, um, debt servicing that uh, the American consumer has. And what we want to, what we're looking at is we've definitely risen from this low. Um, so yes, household obligations is rising. Uh, however, let's keep this in perspective. We are still lower than we were before this COVID correction and COVID uh, recession started. Um, and this level here was lower than it has ever been on record. Now, again, this data only goes back to about 1980. But my takeaway on this is that the average American consumer is in relatively good shape. That's good. Um, the bad news is that um, the Federal Reserve um, knows, and they have been very clear, I've stated this in some of my recent videos, they need to slow the economy in order to uh, get inflation under control. Now, I would, I would argue the, the uh, folks in D.C. need to stop spending as much money. That's certainly going to be uh, helpful as well, but that's a different topic for a different day. Uh, so my point is the average American does seem to be in good financial health. The bad news is we do uh, expect to see layoffs continue to increase. So if you're not layoff ready, uh, we encourage you to um, begin working in that regard. So anyway, that's enough for today. Um, hope everybody stays safe in this hurricane. Certainly be praying for the folks down in Florida and everybody else that's been affected already. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or my team. Uh, we do have the office in Cary, North Carolina, as well as Southern Pines, North Carolina. But again, in today's digital world, we're working with clients all across the country. So uh, if you happen to be watching this and you want to chat with me or my team, feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to see if we can be of service. In the meantime, thanks for watching. And uh, again, stay safe.